I think we want to show our support, gratitude, appreciation to those aiming for higher education. Amen. So we have certificates for all of our graduates of 2021. Now, education is not easy at all, especially during a pandemic, but we're so happy that we had graduates. So when your name is called, you can come up, come get your picture taken. We have a certificate to show you our appreciation. Amen. Graduated from kindergarten, Isabella. And then from junior high, we have Jared. New, come on. Here. Nikita, I don't know if Nikita's here. Not here. Okay, we can give her a hand clap in here. <laughs> Graduating from high school, Jonathan. Diamond. 
president. We know he graduated last year, but we want to celebrate him. So you can take his if you want to. This is the first time in the history of my being a Seventh-day Adventist that we have had a pastor and his wife achieve degrees at the same time. So, to congratulate all the children that have been promoted this year. If you would please stand to the next grade. Let's give them a great big hand. Now we understand that Christian played a very special part on the graduation at his school. I didn't know if he wanted to have some words. He's a man of a few words. But Christian, did you want to have a word to say this morning? He said no. Okay. <laughs> but we are so happy for all those children that are Going back to school, we're going to ask the pastor to give a special prayer uh, for all of our children. It's a little scary right now, but God got you. Amen. God got you. And he's got a covering over you. So we don't want you to be afraid when you go back to school. We want you to stay focused and do your best. Because God is going to help you. What, what I always tell y'all, do your best and what? God will do the rest. So we just want to thank all the parents. It's been a hard year for you guys with virtual for a lot of you. And we just salute you all too. And we continue to pray for all of our strength in the Lord as we go through this pandemic. And that we're hoping that maybe next year this time it's going to be a little bit better. And we can do a lot more hugging and a lot more kissing and just carry on in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we're going to ask all the children to stand. The pastor's going to give a special prayer for all of you guys. Amen. 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 Before we pray, we just want to thank Sister Cummins Amen. for not forgetting this important moment. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, we are sincerely grateful for one more day. And we're also sincerely grateful for our children. Father, you have not just been good to us, but you have been good to our offspring. You have protected them. You have sheltered them. You have kept them by your mercy and your power, and we just want to say thank you. Father, we are very concerned about our children because we are living 
in a crazy world. So, Father, we pray that you will continue to cover them. Bless them not just physically, but mentally. Bless them spiritually, O oh God, and emotionally. Shelter them, O oh God, from the temptations of this crazy world and give them the strength and the recognition to know that they can't get far without you. Thank you, Lord, for everything you have already done as we commit our children in your loving care. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen and amen. Good morning, church, after seven. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let everyone rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. The Lord has been gracious and good to each one of us. Got us through another week. Amen. Amen. So he has blessed us to make it through another week. Give our young folks another hand, please. As we stand to recite our affirmation of faith, begin with Psalms 100, Division, and then Exodus 20, chapter verse 8 to 11. Together, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture, and into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Exodus 20, chapter verse 8 through 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day, keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor, thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is in thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see in all that in there is, and rest the Sabbath. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That's by his prayer. Gracious Lord, once again, we're so thankful that you brought us through another week and enable us to come into your house of worship one more time to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we just ask now that your body and spirit be in this place. Touch each heart today, Lord, as we worship you, as we listen to what is the word spoken today. We ask that you allow that spirit to dwell in us. Touch us in a profound and special way, Lord. Let us know that we are in the presence of an awesome, mighty God. Bless us now, we pray, and give thanks in Jesus' name. Every heart say amen. amen. And God bless you all. We are good. welcome you to praise and worship on this beautiful Sabbath morning. So feel free, get on your feet, clap your hands, do your dance, praise him this morning because he deserves all of our praise, all of our honor, and all the glory, amen. When you 
come into his presence Lifting up the name of Jesus And you hear the people pray And you see the people praise Just forget about your worries Leave your troubles far behind you Don't you wait another minute Just get up and on your feet And get to dancing Singing, jumping, leaping Get to shouting, make it loud And make it glorious Start rejoicing, praising, lifting, raising, get to shouting, make it loud and make it praise glorious. Come on, put your hands together with us this morning. When you come into his presence, lifting up the name of Jesus, and you hear the music playing, and you see the people praising. Forget about your worries Leave your troubles far behind you Don't you wait another minute Just get up and on your feet And get to dancing Singing, jumping, leaping Get to shouting, make it loud And make it glorious Start rejoicing, praising Lifting, raising Get to shouting, make it loud And make it praise glorious
some more volume please elder Wilburn so when I speak the folks can hear what I'm saying amen we want to thank our praise team we recognize we had some we had some technical difficulties but they are so professional that in spite of the difficulties they were still able to praise God and to uplift our spirit and we say hallelujah we say hallelujah thank you so much today i might go over 10 minutes you know we had an additional program today which i believe was essential as much as we're trying to be brief there are some things that we just ought to do and the recognition of our children is not something we should overlook amen amen <coughs> so Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Cummins. Again, thank you, musician. Just some quick announcements. I don't know if you recognize it, but the grass is cut. Yes. Yes. You see that? And we ain't paying nobody to cut it. Which means that somebody from the church volunteered their time and effort to get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Brother Bacon. And whoever work with you, we are grateful for what you're doing to maintain the outside of the church. We ain't paying you, but you're willing. We just want to thank you publicly. 
for that. Amen. Amen. I wouldn't be surprised if Elder Wilburn was out there with him. Uh, he tend to do that sometimes. Amen. Amen. Building committee, we meet tomorrow at 12 noon. We were supposed to meet at 6 last week. But remember, it's going to be 12 noon tomorrow. Building committee members, please. I know you have a lot of stuff going on, but this is important. Church members, look around your church. If you're satisfied with your church, then we can just end our work as a building committee. But if you see some stuff that needs to be done, we're working on it. We are determined to make New Jerusalem appear as New Jerusalem. Amen. It's going to take some time and some funds. The funds that's in your pocket right now, we need it. Because we want this church to look like a house of the Lord. Amen. 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 I know some of you are impatient. Pastor, where's the Marquise? It's coming. Permit was approved by the city of East St. Louis. It's coming. Some of you are impatient about the children room past the when are we going to fix it? It's coming. We got a date now. I can't tell you until I meet with the building committee, but we mean business. We mean business. And there's a lot of things that we haven't started yet, Sister Adams, but when we start it, it's going to be finished in quick succession. Amen. 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 What else do I need to say? I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there's a sanctuary that is in town. It's in Troy, Illinois, not too far away. What they, what they actually did is duplicate the wilderness sanctuary. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The one that Moses was walking around with. They duplicate that sanctuary. Meticulous precision. And you have an opportunity to tour that sanctuary. My wife and I, my, my entire family, my mother-in-law, father-in-law, we all go in this afternoon to see it. Uh, I'm excited. If you can, I think they're leaving town on the 23rd. Uh, uh, go online, check it out. If you need some more information, talk to my wife. She can square you away. But I think it's an amazing experience if you can see the replication of the wilderness sanctuary. Just in your backyard in Troy. Illinois. I think those are all the announcements I got. So if you will, it is 1138. Turn with me to our scripture reading. Sister Powell, good to see you. Good to see you, my sister. Good to see you. Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to our scripture reading. Our scripture reading. Young folks, good to see you too. I haven't seen some of you guys in forever. You all grown and everything. Amen, but good to see you, good to see you. Our scripture reading is taken from Jonah chapter 2 and verse 10. Jonah chapter 2 and verse 10. When you're there, just say amen. I can give you a clue, it's in the Old Testament. And it's also on the screen. Jonah chapter 2 verse 10, you ready? Let me read this from the New Century Version. As a matter of fact, let me read this one from the King James Version. And the Lord spake unto the... Oh, you ain't there yet. That's okay. I'm going to wait for you. And the Lord spake unto the... And it... Out... Unto... Dry land. The caption of my sermon this morning is, A Bad Place for a Good Prayer. A Bad Place for a Good Prayer. Let us pray, Father, for the sake of your people. Can you fill me now with your Holy Spirit? Can you give me things I didn't plan for? Can you use me at New Jerusalem as you have never used me before for your name's glory? And your name's honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. A bad place for a good prayer. Hmm? Uh, the theme for 2021 is divine communication. Somebody's paying attention. Divine communication. For the first six months, we look at what? Listen to him, and the last six months we're 
We're looking at what? Talking to him. Amen. 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 I just want to quickly recap some stuff we spoke about last week before I go into the sermon for this week. Stay awake. I promise you I'm not going to be long. Amen. Last week we look at the fact that everything God created, every living things that God created, they were created with life and vigor. Mm, you remember that? We walked through the creation story. But the only thing that God created that was lifeless was what? Man. Was man. We were lifeless and naked. Hmm? And what's the lesson? God wanted us to learn from our very first inception, Sister Mel, that we are not dependent. We are not independent, sorry, but we are dependent. And we also talk about John chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. I am the vine. And you are the branches. We learn that the branches cannot survive without the vine. Caption of that sermon was, we ain't all that. We ain't all that. Uh, the question that we sought to answer last week was, why should we pray? The answer is because we need God. God don't need us. We are independent, not dependent. And the question that we will seek to answer today is when should we pray? When should we pray? Jonah chapter 1, the first verse begins with God speaking. Just like Genesis. Huh? God was speaking to the prophet Jonah. And God said, Jonah, I want you to go down there to East St. Louis and preach to those folks in the inner city that's what the bible said right go to Nineveh according to historians Nineveh is 500 miles from Jot from uh, 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 Jonah's hometown but this fool decide he ain't going to Nineveh he's gonna go to where which is 2,500 miles from his hometown said he's going to run from God. You don't know anything about that, do you? He said he was going to run from God to Tarshish. Uh, he said, I'm grown. I, I do what I want to do. Why should I listen to God? I'm tired of Bible restriction. I'm tired of living my life based on the Old Testament and New Testament. I'm tired of church rules. I'm grown. I'm going to do what I want to do when I want to do it. So if I don't want to go to Nineveh, I ain't going to Nineveh. I don't care what Pastor McKenzie says. But as he was going in the opposite direction, in Jonah chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible said, you know, you know that's trouble right there, Brother Suggs. Just Jonah, I, I don't think I'm going to get it right today. I'm going to try. I keep messing up his name. Jonah was going in the opposite direction. Jonah felt that he was grown. Jonah felt that he was independent. But God, but God sent a great storm, according to the King James Version. In the New International Version, the New Century Version, the Bible said God sent out a great wind into the sea and the wind was so great that the ship was about to be broken. Let me pause right there for a second. second. Quick commercial. Quick commercial. Oftentimes, God will send a storm when we are going in the wrong direction. Are you with me, somebody? I know I'm preaching to myself right now. You see, there are two different kind of storms that we face in life. One storm is the kind of storm that Job went through. Not because he was doing something wrong, but because God was proud of Job and the devil was upset with Job. You see, I've read somewhere that those who will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Hmm? So some storms are coming from the devil because we are going in the right direction. That's one type of storm. But the second type of storm is the storm that is sent by God to redirect our steps. 
I just want to talk to myself for a minute. Oftentimes when God informs us to go right and we are going left, he will send a storm to change our direction. Hmm? You got to stay with me. That is why our storm should be a moment of self-reflection. You got to ask yourself some questions. How did I get in this storm? Is this a storm that is coming from the devil because I'm doing what God wants me to do? Or is this a storm coming from God because I'm living in rebellion? What is the source of my storm? And the thing I, I learned about this storm was that Jonah was not the only one affected by the storm. Everybody, Elder Hicks, in that ship was affected by the storm. Uh, let me pause again for a second. Do you know that some of the storms that you create in your life will not just affect you, but it will affect everybody that's close to you? Do you know that your children are going through some storm that you started? Do you know that your spouse are going through some storms that you started? Do you know that your church is going through storms that you started? Because your storms are not just localized to you. A lot of folks are affected by your mess. That is why we got to be careful when we are making decisions. And when I read this story, I got upset. Go ahead and ask me why I got upset. Because I read verse 5 of Jonah chapter 1. In verse 5, the Bible said, all the sailors were working hard to save the ship. Throwing stuff overboard. Commercial again. Do you know sometimes when you're in a storm, there are some things that you got to throw overboard because you can't ride through the storm with them? Yes. Huh? That was just a quick commercial. Sometimes a storm is an indication that you got too much baggage. You got to throw some stuff and some people overboard. I'm just reading from the word. So I got upset when I read verse 5. Because these, these sailors are working hard to save the ship. Where is Jonah? Jonah downstairs in the basement. Brother DeAndre sleeping. So he, <laughs> I'm sorry. So he caused the storm messed up everybody else but he's sleeping in his storm <laughs> have you ever seen that before some folks who cause a storm and they're okay with the storm but the storm is affecting everybody else have you ever seen that before they're accustomed to their mess and they can live in their mess but their mess is affecting everybody else and now you got to be fighting to deal with their mess while they are sleeping. And some folks are storm creators. I'm sorry, I'm just in the word. I mean, the, everywhere they go, they bring their storm clouds. Amen, amen. I heard Sister Smith outside. Feel like preaching. Feel like preaching. So, so, so watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. I'm almost finished. I'm coming down. You got to read from verse 7 all the way through verse 14. They said to Jonah, listen, call on your God. That's a rebuke now, Sister Adams. Because the world is telling the Seventh-day Adventists, to call on his God it's bad when the world gotta tell you that you need to call on your God 
because it should be the other way around you should be telling the world to call on God but they were telling Jonah call on your God and Jonah told them about his God and told them about his story that he was on the run that he was a fugitive of God's grace and then listen to me somebody Jonah told them the only way the storm will cease you gotta throw me overboard ah listen to me I wish I could preach to somebody I wish I could preach to somebody let, let me give you a quick commercial and I'm gonna move on because I don't want you guys to be mad with your pastor there are some folks in your life that as long as they're in your life, you will experience storms. That's all right. It's not for everybody. It's just one or two folks. There are some folks in your life, as long as they're in your life, your life will be stormy. Hmm? Sometimes they got to go overboard, lest they're going to drive you overboard. Huh? I wish I could preach to somebody. So, so, so Jonah said, you got to throw me overboard because I am the cause of the storm. Yeah. 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 Amen. So they threw, reluctantly, they threw Jonah overboard. Now this is where I get excited. I, I love when I read the Bible and I see scriptures that reminds me, Elder Hoyle, that my God is a merciful God. Those are the scriptures that get me excited. You see, when you're a sinner like me, you appreciate every indication of grace. Watch verse 17. The Bible said when they threw Jonah overboard, verse 15, so they picked up Jonah and they threw him in the sea and the sea became calm. Verse 17, this is where I start jumping for joy now. I wish I'd wore my dancing shoes. The Bible said, the Lord caused a big fish. To what? That, that's, that's the new century version. I love the King James because the King James said, the Lord prepared a big fish. Do you realize that the word prepare as an E-D on the end? Ah, uh, you missed that. You missed that. Which means it is past tense. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm going to talk to myself now. The Bible said the Lord prepared a big fish. Which means, Sister Jo, and it's just the two of us now, even before the storm came, God had made provision. For Jonah. Ah, uh, you got to stay with me. Jonah was trying to run away from God. But I'm glad that we cannot run away from God's mercy. Brother Victor, even when Pastor McKenzie is acting a fool, God has already prepared a way of deliverance, a way of escape. God prepared. No, no, I'm sorry, Brother Brown. I thought God only prepared for people when they're living right. I thought God only prepared for people when they're walking in the path of righteousness. But I'm glad that I serve a God that made provision for the rebellious and the disobedient. I'm sorry, I get excited. I am glad that even my relationship with God is not good as provision for me still good God will make a way when there seems to be no way I am glad that God prepare not just a fish but a big fish you miss that you, you see when you're in a big storm you can't work with a small fish because the waves would drift the small fish away in a big storm you need a big fish in a big storm you need big provision thank god i serve a big god 
And Jonah was inside the fish. And verse 17 of chapter 1 said that Jonah was in the fish's belly for three days and three nights. What if the story had ended right there? Hmm? Think about that. What if Jonah was just one chapter and it was all about the prophet who ran away, caught in a storm, and now is trapped in a fish belly? Uh, what if that was the end of the story? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But I'm glad that the story did not end there. Mm, I am glad that my story did not end with me trapped in my mess. I'm glad that my story did not end with me fooling around and making mistakes. I'm glad that my story did not end with me in prison. That was just the first chapter, but there's always a second chapter. I want to talk to somebody, a bad place for a good prayer. Because in chapter 2, Elder Hicks, Jonah is given a testimony. Ah, you're not with me, that's all right. I'm in this sermon all by myself. In Jonah chapter 2 and verse 1. The Bible said, then Jonah prayed. Do you see that ED again? Jonah what? Prayed unto the Lord. Where? Outside. Inside. Of the, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you prayed to God? Inside a fish belly. Hmm? Elder Hicks said he prayed to God with fishes in his belly. Don't mess with me now. I got that good hearing. That's not what I'm talking about, Elder. That's not what I'm talking about. He prayed unto the Lord inside the fish's belly, Brother Therese. Oh, you see, sometimes we read these stories so fast, Sister Terry, we don't see what they're saying. This is telling me it don't matter where I find myself. I can still pray. You see, church folks will ask about my destination, but God is in my journey. It don't matter where you are. Stay with me, somebody. I am glad that Jesus is just a prayer away. And he may not get there when you want him. But he's going to get there on time. He prayed inside the fish belly. As a matter of fact, verse 2 of chapter 2 said, And said, I cry by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me. Ah, uh, Sister D, I'm excited. He heard me where? Out of the belly of hell I cry. The word hell in, in the Hebrew simply means the grave. For Jonah, this was it. He felt like he was in his grave. It was all over. But he just decided to pray. Oh, you know what the old folks used to say? Let us have a little talk with Jesus. And tell him all about our trials. He will hear our faintless cries. And will answer by and by. I don't care how you get in the fish belly. What I care about is it's not too late to cry unto God. Let me talk about the fish stomach for a minute. It was not a comfortable location. I don't envy Jonah because I would never want that experience, Sister J. Mm -hmm. In the fish belly, there's something called hydrochloric acid. That hydrochloric acid will melt anything. But Jonah was in the acid and he wasn't melting. I read somewhere where a bush was on fire and it wasn't consumed. 
I've read somewhere three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro was caused in the fire. They were thrown in the fire and they weren't burned. Stay with me, somebody. God has a way of preserving us in acidic condition where we should have been melted. We should have been destroyed. But God has a staying power. So Jonah was standing in that hydrochloric acid that can melt bones, but his body was still intact. Stay with me, somebody. In the fish stomach, you have limited oxygen, which meant that the brother could only breathe, but he still found enough courage to pray. Inside the fish stomach was dark and wet. Jonah called it hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, I'm talking to somebody now. Do you know, do you know that sometimes God has put us in a very uncomfortable position so we can pray real prayers? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me talk to somebody for a minute. Because oftentimes when we have no trials and money in the bank account and we're physically well and our children are saints, we pray microwave prayers. But when we find ourselves between the devil and the deep blue sea, when our backs are against the wall, that is when our prayers become sincere and genuine. Ah, oh, you got to stay with me. We have never seen Jonah pray before until he was in the whale's belly. You got to watch this now because some of you folks feel like you don't need to pray. But the God I serve loves us so much and love to talk to us so much that if you are not praying, God will make sure he puts things in your life. To ensure that your prayer life will come back to life. Are you with me somebody? God is not just going to watch you drift away. God will put you in position where prayer is no longer a choice but a necessity. That's the reason why some of us are in the marriages we're in. Because we weren't praying at the beginning. That's why some of us are working where we're working because we weren't praying the way we should and God in his wisdom knows what it takes to get us on our knees I'm almost finished I'm almost finished I ain't gonna stay with you for too long so Jonah started to pray I listen to Jonah's prayer I'm gonna run through this as fast as I can listen to Jonah's prayer you see at first when I read this story Elder Hicks I felt sorry for Jonah in that fish belly for three days and three nights. I felt sorry for him. But then I realized, Sister Joanne, that God used the fish to save him from the storm. Huh? If it wasn't for the fish, he would have perished in the storm. Jonah was in the fish belly for three days and three nights. Jonah would not survive in the storm for three hours. So God uses the fish to save him from the storm. Come on, somebody. I just want to talk to you for a quick second. Sometime what you think is a trial is just a lifeboat. Let, let me say that again. Sometime what you think is a trial just a lifeboat is the thing that God is trying to use to save you from the storm. If I had time, I would talk about that more, but I'm going to move on. This is, what, this is what Jonah said, verse 3 all the way down to verse 6. He said to God, you threw me into the sea. Down, down in the deep sea, the water was all around me, and your powerful wave floated around me. I said I was driven out of your presence, but I hope to see your holy temple again. The water of the sea closed around about my neck. The deep sea was around me. Sea weeds were wrapped around my head. He said, 
I went down where the mountain rose from. I thought I was locked in this prison forever. But you saved me from the pit of death. Oh my God. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. God will put us in a bad place. So we can pray good prayers. Have you ever been there before? I know I have. I know I have. Let me share a quick testimony with you. And I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to wrap it up. They gave me seven years to do this PhD. That's what the school gave me. I laughed when they said that. Seven years. I'm a smart kid. I don't need no seven years to do no PhD. Go look at, go look at my transcripts. But at the end of seven years, I weren't done. I wasn't done. See, my grandma is even messed up too. <laughs> Elder Hicks, at the seven years, I wasn't finished. They gave me one more, eight. At the end of eight, I still wasn't finished. Those, they called me up. They said, listen, we're giving you three months to finish this. Elder Hall, they said, if you don't finish in three months, we're dropping you. So all those years of work that you have done, it's gone. Hmm? Guess what now? Now I ain't thinking about my intellect. I realize that it ain't going to save me. Because every time I send a transcript, they sent it back. I send a transcript in, they sent it back. Now you got to do 16 miles to finish the PhD. And it took me about three years to do 13 of them. And I got three more to go. You got to do three in three months. You, you missed that. You missed that. It will take more than one year to do three milestones. But I remember when I was 19. Went back to Adventist High School at the age of 19. I turned 20 in that school. The 10th grade. You don't understand how humiliating that feels. Young kids. And they performing better than you are. I got 2% out of 90 for my first essay. The teacher called me and the next guy. I felt good, Brother Therese, because I got 2%. He got one. <laughs> Sister Terry, this is what my English teacher said to me, Sister Bobbitt. She said, I am not equipped to help you. She said, your performance is worse than the kids in the seventh grade. I went home. I know I've shared this story with you I went on my knees like this and I ran to God and I said Lord I lift my hands to you know how to help I know my next essay I got 37 you're not with me I, I know that's not an A but that's a big improvement so when they told me sister Dixon that we're gonna drop you for the PhD I remember the God that helped me in high school to him fasting and praying every Friday and listen when I send that transcript in again gotta prove send in my documents for the defense of my dissertation gotta prove when I defend my dissertation they had no questions they said it was flawless you ain't with me somebody got the dean's approval and finish before they kick me out. Not because I'm intelligent, but because I found myself in a tough position and I know what to do in tough positions. I know to lift my eyes unto the hills from whence come in my help. My help come from the, Lord. the brother said I was in a bad condition. Seaweeds wrapped around me. I felt like I was in prison. Verse 7 said, uh, My soul fainted within me. Then I remember the Lord. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. He said, And I remember the Lord. And I pray. 
And he heard me. Thank God that God is a prayer answering God. The New Century Version said, when my life had almost gone, I remember the Lord. I pray unto you and you heard my prayer from your holy temple. I got about two seconds. I'm going to be, I'm going to be done. Let me read verse 8 and verse 9 for you real quick. He said, people worship useless idols reading from the new century version they give loyalty they give up their loyalty to you but i will praise and thank you while i while i give a sacrifice to you and i will keep my promise to you salvation cometh from the lord and now let me finish with verse 10 this is my final scripture i know you're ready to go your food getting cold on the stove but let me give you something to go with verse 10 then the Lord spoke to the fish. That's my scripture reading. Sister P, I thought somebody would be jumping right now. Hmm? Jonah prayed to God. Then the Lord spoke to the fish. To the, to the fish. The fish. Remember, the fish was Jonah's prison. Hmm? The Bible said, then the Lord spoke to the fish, and the fish threw up Jonah unto dry land oh god i get amazed i get amazed i get excited i get excited you see jonah did not talk to the fish jonah talked to god and then god spoke to the fish ah you, you missed that i know you missed that jonah did not talk to the fish elder honor jonah talked to god and then allowed god to talk to the fish you see sometimes we are talking to the wrong people you don't need to talk to your supervisor all the time sometimes you can talk to God and let God talk to your supervisor sometimes you don't have to talk to your oppressors or your haters you can talk to God and let God talk to them that folk in church that keep rubbing you the wrong way you don't always have to talk to them. Sometimes you can talk to God about them and let God talk to them. You don't always have to talk to your spouse. Sometimes you can just talk to God and let God talk to them. Your children are acting crazy. You don't have to talk to them all the time. Sometimes you can talk to God and let him talk to them because my God knows how to talk to a donkey my God knows how to talk to a fish so my God knows how to talk to your problems oh if some of us were in Jonah's position we would be fighting the fish and cursing out the fish but I've read somewhere that the battle is the Lord. I have read somewhere that my job is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I've read somewhere when the enemy comes in like a flood, my God will raise up a standard. Again, I'm, that's my last text. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. But God spoke to the fish. Do you know? That Jonah is a type of Christ. If you read Matthew chapter 12 40, Christ said, Just like Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights, so will the Son of God be in the earth for three days and three nights. But just like Jonah, the story did not end with him in the earth. Just like Jonah's story did not end with him in the belly of the fish. Praise God, the fish threw him up. And likewise, Jesus did not stay in the ground. Paul said if Jesus was not resurrected, then your faith and my faith would have been in vain. But I thank God for Sunday morning. Just like God spoke to the God sent an angel to speak to Jesus. I'm finished, I'm finished. The angel touched down with lightning speed. Roll away the stone like it was a pebble. And then the angel went in his jacket pocket for the message that the father gave. 
he looked death in the eye and he said death where is thy sting he then looked at grave and said grave where is thy victory then he looked at Jesus and Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life a bad place a bad place for a good prayer let me tell you something right now as I close if you find yourself in a bad place God is just trying to set you up he ain't trying to destroy you he ain't trying to punish you but you see your prayer life has not been what it should be and he's trying to get you back on track and some of us will not pray unless we're in a fish belly so sometime God will allow you to fail your exams so you can remember the source of your strength God will allow marriages to fail God will allow you to lose your job because he's putting you in a bad place so you can pray a good prayer father we are thankful for your mercy and your grace and we are glad that when we try to run away from you you send storms to bring us back and then oh God you make provisions in the storm that we are not overwhelmed and then you put us in a place where we can't turn to anybody else but you. Father, we want to pray sincere prayers. And today we are giving you permission to do whatever it takes to get us to the point where we recognize that we need to talk to you on a daily basis. Father, Jonah's story reminds us that even when we run away from you, praise the Lord, you will not run away from us. Oh, I just want to say that again, Lord. Jonah's story reminds us that even when we are running away from you, you will not run away from us. As a matter of fact, you will pursue us. There's somebody right now, Lord, that is running away from you. Somebody who's tired of the church somebody who have been wrong by this church and they don't even want to be in church anymore someone who's questioning their relationship with you somebody who feel as if Christianity doesn't worth it and they want to throw in the towel father put that person in a bad place right now that they can pray a good prayer remind them that you are still the captain of their souls and the master of their destiny. Thank you, Lord, for your loving care and tender mercies. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say, Amen. amen. And Amen. All right, all right. Before we go, just a quick reminder I will be with you next Sabbath. I will be with you next Sabbath. I'm tempted to give you my caption for next Sabbath, but the truth is, Sister Terry, I don't even know what it will be. But you can't afford to miss next Sabbath. I enjoy the fellowship. Good to see the faces. And I hope to see every single one of you that were present this week. I want you to be present next week as we continue to worship and to fellowship in spite of this pandemic. God bless.